Pass over to Emma, who is the coordinator for English and Media. Emma, over to you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, as Matt just said, I'm Emma and I'm the coordinator for Hi. English, Media and Film. And um, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what all of the subjects include and then um, summarise of what our department can offer you. Um, next slide, please. Um, so we'll start off with A-level English literature. So I've just put the exam board on there for you, so OCR, and I've broken it down into the three components. So something you'll notice is all four of our subjects include um, two components of exams and one component of coursework slash NEA. Um, so next slide, please. Um, our component one um, starts off with students studying Hamlet. So if you've looked at Shakespeare already at Key Stage 3, you might have studied Romeo and Juliet and maybe Macbeth. Um, but Hamlet's a little bit more complex and we look at what are the, you know, um, what is Shakespeare really referring to here and how has Hamlet been interpreted um, over time? Um, has it always been the same or has it differed? Um, we then also look at the Duchess of Malfi and Chaucer's The Merchant's Prologue and Tale. Um, so that is component one. Then in component two, we look at um, a wide variety of dystopian literature, which I think is particularly relevant uh, given the current political climate. Um, and then we uh, look at George Orwell's 1984 and Margaret Atwood's Handmaid's Tale. So again, if you studied Animal Farm, maybe um, Key Stage 3, that would be definitely relevant when we look at 1984. And if you've watched the um, TV series, which I highly recommend, um, you will be able to draw parallels to the novel of The Handmaid's Tale. Um, the NEA consists of um, three, uh, three different texts. One is a prose text, one is a poetry text, and one is a drama text. You can see a couple of them on the slide now. So we look at Grace Nichols, um, Sula, and also a uh, wide gas SC. Um, but we always update our texts to make sure that they're really relevant for the cohort. Um, so um, always, uh, always, uh, yeah on the pulse of what we need to cover to make sure you have a really um, enjoyable experience with us. Um, our next subject we're going to look at is English language and literature. And this one is um, also with OCR. And this has three components, but also an independent study aspect. So um, the component one focuses on an anthology of 20 non-fiction spoken and written texts. And on the next slide, I've put a, um, a couple of uh, screenshots from them so you can see it's a real wide variety of genres. Um, which makes it really interesting and engaging. And then we also um, study a poetry collection from Emily Dickinson in component two and a streetcar uh, street named Desire um, in that component also. Um, so a wide variety. And I know perhaps at GCSE language might not be your favourite paper, but actually at A-level it really has um, some really interesting uh, text that we study. So um, please do have, have, a, have a look at the text in more detail. Um, at component three, we look at things fall apart, um, which is excellent. And then students will develop their understanding of narrative technique through writing a task, um, which is 500 words, and then um, writing a commentary on it. Um, the independent study element allows learners to pursue um, particular interests and produce a piece of original non-fiction writing, which is nice because it means you get to express yourself um, and it's not always about commenting on other people's work. Um, moving on to media studies. Um, media studies also has uh, three components and it is also with OCR. The first two are exams and component three is the coursework where, where you get to make practical work. Um, on to the next slide, please. You'll notice a range of texts there because in component one you study news and online media and you do get to ask, is online um, media regulated? Um, you know, can Trump really put those tweets out there? Um, and then you also study things like magazines, advertising, marketing and music videos. So very um, up to date, very relevant. We look at key concepts such as media language and representation. So how is it actually constructed? And then also what representations are created? Are they stereotypical? Are they counter typical? What impact does that have on the audience who um, who who receive these products? And then in component two, next slide, please. We have more of a focus on media industries and audiences. So this is things like um, who, who produces it, who distributes it, how is it funded um, and what technology is used it to make sure that those products are received by an audience. As you can see, we look at radio, video games and film um, and we also study long form television drama. So one English speaking programme, which is Stranger Things, I'm sure you're all aware, and then also um, uh, Deutschland 83. So lots of variety going on in the products that we study. Um, and then the NEA, as mentioned already, is um, normally music videos where you get to recreate a music video um, with your own spin on it. 
and then you get to make a, a website to accompany it because we understand that you know convergence multiple platforms are the way that things are marketed these days um thank you on to film studies um so again um three components for this one two exams one coursework but this exam board is with educas so we look at things like hollywood film from 1930 to 1990 um uh, American film since 2005, British film since uh, 1995, and we explore key concepts like narrative theory, um, the concept of spectatorship, and uh, various critical perspectives such as feminism, post-colonialism, and I'm sure that you will notice some of those products um, there on the screen, so you get to look at different aspects um, for different ones. Um, in component two, we look at uh, global film, documentary, silent cinema, and experimental film, so again, this is where you get to really hone your skills and look at how things are really constructed um, and uh, how they are marketed to different audiences around the globe. Um, the NEA is a short film where you create four to five minutes, um, you know, completely from scratch. You make the screenplay, you create it, you edit it, and then you also produce a photograph storyboard of a key section from the screenplay um, just to show your creative process. So apologies if I've gone really fast. Um, all four subjects um, require deep analysis and exploration of theoretical perspectives. All of them cover things like feminism and post-colonialism, which are really interesting and juicy topics to explore. Um, this prepares you really well for university level study. Um, and because of the nature of the subjects, they really can open up multiple pathways. So you don't just need to go on and study media, English or film at university. You can take it into looking at marketing or going into PR or going into politics or psychology because there's lots of overlap in terms of theory. Um, next slide. So why should you study it here? Well, we've got um, really strong links with HE um, and work experience. We, um, uh, we've always got various opportunities going on and we've got um, lots of speakers who come in. I know Reggie Yates has come in previously to speak to our cohort. Um, we're fully integrated with Google Classroom, which means online learning, especially now, is, is really easy. Um, we use it um, in every part of our lessons, so there's always wider reading, there's always um, uh, extension work that you can be doing. And we offer various opportunities such as become a media mogul, where you get to learn how to use cameras, editing um, uh, for um, moving an image, but also print. And you can also attend film poetry clubs to, to really um, work out what your interests are. Um, we have a specialist teaching staff, we have um, at least 14 members of staff in our team. Um, so very large and we have um, a purpose, um, purposeful uh, classrooms which are subject specific. So it's not a case of, you know, you'll be in a different classroom every time. You will be in a literature classroom if you are studying literature or a film classroom if you are studying film. Um, we also have two dedicated technicians, um, which is almost unheard of um, these days. And we have uh, access to industry standard equipment in all of our media and film suites. So I think I've covered quite a lot. But please do let me know if you have any questions. Fantastic. Um, uh, uh, Emma, thank you so much for that. That was that was very informative. There are some questions actually. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 so one question was about sort of when studying uh, uh, A level English. So do, do students have to buy books ourselves or do they access them via the library? Um, so we offer a, a couple of different options, really. Um, we do have a system where we purchase the books for you and then you can buy them from us for five pound, which is um, a heavily discounted price. Or you can rent them from the library or we, um, where possible, we do provide online copies as well. So a variety of options. Fantastic. Excellent. Uh, and one more question here. What degrees would English Lit be particularly useful for? Um, to be honest, because English Lit is one of the um, uh, you know, core subjects, um, it will be useful for any university level study you wanted to do. It provides you with um, analytical uh, skills, but also um, helps you to consider different perspectives. So lots of our students go on to study things like politics or psychology or criminology or law. Um, that's one of our big ones, um, because again, you, you learn the art of debate. Fantastic. OK, uh, I still have some questions, though, if you've got time, I yep, hope. Go for it. <laughs> uh, so can you do both film and media? Absolutely, yeah. The main difference between media and film is when we do look at film in media, we're only allowed to study it from an industry perspective. So we, we look at who owns it, where does the money come from, how is it regulated, and that's it. 
when you study film, you look at it from a complete analysis point of view and you really pick it apart, looking at how it's been constructed, what representations are there, as well as the who owns it, where's the money come from. Um, so both of them uh, actually cover very different aspects when it comes to the idea of film. There's no overlap. Fantastic. And in terms of in going back to English for a second, can you just study English literature in, or, or do you have to do English language and literature? Um, so there are two separate courses. So you can do English literature um, if you prefer um, uh, looking at sort of prose, poetry and drama only. And then if you preferred um, looking at um, non-fiction, then you might want to consider literature and language. So um, I know at GCSE quite often uh, you'll do lit and lang at the same time. Um, have a look at your papers. Um, and just see what what are the areas that you particularly enjoy. Like I know language paper uh, two, question five, that one's normally not great, but at A level, it's really exciting to do literature and language, so don't disregard it just because of GCSE. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Emma. So many options. It's, it's really exciting. Thank you.